Welcome everyone to our course Digital Design with Verilog. In today's class, we are going to talk about multi level logic minimization. This part of this slides has prepared from chapter 6 of Kohavi's book. So far, we have discussed the switching function minimization uh, uh, using Carnot map and Coin McCloskey method, and those are primarily say two level logic minimizations. And today, we are going to discuss multi level logic minimization. So, you should understand the difference between two level versus multi level logic. Okay. So, let us take this example. Say, suppose I have a function switching function f, which is optimized by say some uh, method by Carnot map or Coin McCloskey, and we got this minimal expression. So, once we represent this in a uh, digital circuit, each product term can be represented as an AND gate, each product term can be represented as an AND gate. And this finally, this all these product terms are uh, ordered at the second layer. Right? So this is called two level because this is my level one, this is my level one, and this is level two. Although uh, a AND gate of four input has to be implemented uh, separately, but once we represent the minimal expression is a sum of product form, then the uh, corresponding uh, circuit representation called two level representation. On the other hand, if you take the same expression and you try to factor this fun, uh, expression in following way. So, let me do that. So, the expression is u v x z plus w x z plus u bar y bar z plus v bar x bar z bar plus v bar y z bar. So, uh, from this I can take this x z as common right. So, I can take x z common from this. So, it is u v plus w and similarly from here I can take v bar z bar as common right. So, I will just keep u bar y bar z plus v bar z bar then it is x bar plus y. Then uh, from this two term, now I can take z as common. So, I can take z uh, from here. So, then it will be x into u v plus w plus u bar y bar plus here v bar z bar into x bar plus y. Right. So, this is the one expression, this is called factored form. Okay. So, now you can see this is not a sum of product representation right here it is basically there are or operator here and they are actually clubbing in a different format. So, now if I so this is what is given here the same expression. So, now if I try to represent this as a circuit. So, this uh, u v is represented by this and get then this or is this of w then there you are doing a and of x. So, then I am doing and of x and this u bar x bar y bar is happening here. Then there is a or of the this or is happening here. Then finally, and with z is happening here and similarly this part of the uh, part is represented here and finally, the final or is happening in this right. So, now if you look into this uh, representation and this circuit this is uh, called multi level logic right. What is happening here you have le level 1. 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, there are 6 level right. So, there are multiple levels. So, when we basically represent an equation in this factored form and try to design a circuit, then this is what is called multi level logic. Okay. Sometime this multi level logic actually give you better circuit. For example, here in this uh, although this is a minimal expression that I obtained from a bigger uh, function expressions which has the number of literal is 16 whereas, here the number of literal is 11. Okay. So, as I mentioned earlier that the number of literal actually contributes the overall area. So, if the number of literal is less obviously, this will take lesser areas. Okay. Now, you think about uh, this is particularly important when you have multiple outputs right. So, there are many functions uh, in practice which have 
multiple outputs right so not only one output you have output one what output two to output k with say n inputs right i1 to i n many times there are some common circuit between these outputs right if you do this two level uh, optimization what is going to happen you are going to optimize the expression corresponding o1 you are going to do it for o2 and so on so there will be no overlap between these output expressions so there will be no resource sharing between these outputs. But in practice, uh, uh, you will always see that if, if a circuit has multiple outputs and they are taking the same inputs, may, many part of this uh, part is actually recomputed, uh, it is going to shared between the outputs. Okay? So, once you consider this multi level logic optimizations for multiple output together, you can actually optimize on those cases as well. Okay? So, let me give an example. Say for example, if you take uh, a single output say f, you have this expression, you can see that you can take uh, uv uh, common from here, you will get this. From here, you can take w as uh, common sub expression, you will get this and finally, it is like this. So, this is common sub expression, right? this is called common sub expression. right? Similarly, if you have say two output in a function which has the same inputs and if I factor this in this format and if I factor it to this way, I can see that there is a common sub expression between two output as well. So, in this case you can have one module which is computing effectively u v plus w. right? So, you are giving u v and w as input and then you are doing a and of this with x and this is getting and then you have a one more and where you are giving u bar y bar this is getting or and you are getting output f1 whereas the same u plus b can be reused to compute f2 as well because what i can do i can just do a z so this output will come and z will come and this is my f2 so this part is basically shared right so, whenever we talked about multi level logic optimizations of multiple outputs, such optimization is possible, which is not possible in two level. Okay? So, what we effectively finding here is that once we given a bigger expression in sum of product form, you are trying to factoring the expression to identify the common sub expressions. Okay? And this common sub expression can occur within an expression. For example, in the first case I have taken x plus z as the uh, common sub expression. Uh, in that expression itself, so that I can reuse or this common sub expression may arise between two fun, uh, two outputs as well. Right? For example, in the next example that u v plus w is my common sub expression. So, uh, to do this we need some process, right? so we need certain way we, we can do this. So, that is something we are going to discuss that how do you actually do this multi level optimization in today's class and next class. I will highlight the need of multi level optimizations with one more example and specifically this parity bit generator. Uh, in this case, you will see that uh, you can actually get uh, much simpler expression if you do multi level logic optimization. Let me explain this how. So, you know this parity bit generator is something a circuit which is basically just check whether if uh, what is the whether the number of 1 in the input is uh, even or odd. Okay? Say for example, I am doing an odd parity. It means that uh, if say I have given a 4 bit input, so here the number of 1 is even 2, so the output will be 0. If you have uh, our input is this, the number of 1 is 3, so which is odd, so output will be 1. If I give 1 0 0, uh, the number of 1 is 1 is odd, output will be 1 and so on. Okay? So, th this is a circuit where I will give a 4 bit input say A, B, C and D, it will give a that parity output which will be 0 or 1 based on the number of 1 there in A, B, C, D inputs. Okay? So, now if you try to put this particular function um, things in a Carnot map uh, say for 4 inputs, I uh, can see that the 1s given in a circle here, these are the cases where the circuit output will be 1 because those are the cases number of 1 in the input is odd. You take an example for this you have 2 1 1 1 here 3 
you take this one there is 1 1 here 2 1 here so it is 3. So, this way you can cross check and you will see these are the ones. Now, you try to apply your Carnot map minimization method you will see that here you cannot club any of the a one together because the rules of Carnot map is that if they are consecutive locations right or successive locations, but there is no way you can club two ones together. So, each of this term represent using four literals. So, there are eight cases 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, eight uh, product term will be there and each of them will have four literals. So, 8 into 4 32 literals will be there in my minimal expression because there is no optimization possible in this case. Okay. So, now, uh, so if you represent in two level you need 32 literals and you it, your uh, if you assume that one literal corresponding to two transitions, uh, two transistors in usually uh, that is the kind of uh, rough estimate. So, your area will be kind of 64 transistors. Okay. On the other hand, let me now take that expression uh, all this one and I wrote like this. If I write this, it will be this expression. Now, you see that I take a bar b 1 common. Now, I am trying to do the factoring. Okay. So, I can take this then I will get this. Okay. So, from this two product term I take a bar b as a kind of a common sub expression here. From this two product term I take a b as the common sub expression. From this two product terms I get a b bar as the common sub expression. Okay. So, now what I can do here you can see clearly that you can take this a bar b bar here. So, basically what is happening this is basically XOR gate okay? because if you remember that XOR expression is this. So, I can write this as a C bar uh, expression uh, C XOR D this is basically uh, X nor right which is uh, complement of XOR. So, I can write XOR and complement this is x c or x or d this is again x naught of c d which is I can write x or complement bar right. Now, I can take this uh, c, c bar d common from here right it is kind of distributive property uh, and then this this a bar b and a, a b a b will come here. Similarly, I can take this this and this as distributive property I can apply and then this product term and this product term will be come like this. Okay. After this what we can see that this I can write again a x or b complement right and then this is c x or d plus this is again a x or b and then c x or d d complement right. So, now this is basically again it is coming as a XOR right. So, it is basically kind of X Y bar plus X bar Y in this form. So, it is effectively XOR of these two term right this this term and this term. So, this is what I get. So, effectively it is nothing but XOR of 4 A B C D inputs right and if I write this it is nothing but 3 XOR gets. Okay. So, what I can see that 64 literal result in only 4 literals in multi level. Similarly, you can take multiplication example, multiplication of two Boolean number, you will always end up having this kind of truth table. So, this suggests that if you do a multi level uh, analysis of your design and identifying this common sub expressions uh, reiteratively and factoring your expressions, you will end up getting a, a simpler expression, right. So, we understood the need for multi level optimizations. The advantage is that it always uh, it most of the time give less area and delay as compared to two level optimizations. Disadvantage is that this is a too complex problem. So, optimal solution sometimes is difficult to get. So, we can always look for a near optimal solution. Okay. Usually, this multi level logic synthesis happen using technology dependent and in technology independent way in the sense that whatever the analysis we are doing is does not depend on your target technology. Uh, so, this is kind of called technology independent, but once you try to map to a, a library technology library then the optimization depends on the gates available in your technology library. Uh, so, so far in this course we will always talk about this independent one. Okay. So, now let us uh, try to formalize this multi level logic optimization problem. So, you have set of Boolean expressions because we assume that there are multiple outputs of a function and then your objective is to find out the common sub expressions and kind of use it right eliminate or reuse it. Okay. 
important thing is the factoring the way I explained that is called factoring and finally, you will get set of optimized boolean expression corresponding to each output. So, we will see how we can do this factoring efficiently automatically. Okay. So, to do this factoring we usually construct the algebraic model of the functions boolean functions. So, what does this mean? So, in the what we do this boolean functions are represents by the algebraic expression. Okay. So, in the polynomial algebra we do not have the boolean properties hold there. right? So, for example, if you have say x and x bar in boolean algebra it is always 1, but in algebraic expression I will just consider this as a new product term and this is a new sorry this is a new literal and this is a new literal. Okay. So, the relation between x and x bar does not there in uh, algebra. right? So, we will just consider this as a just a new variable this is a this is b. So, the relation between x and x bar is not there. right? Similarly, this kind of property there are many properties that I have discussed on switching algebra. right? That if you have this say uh, distributive like a plus b or c it is a plus b or a or c. right? So, this is not holding in algebraic expression. Okay? So, just to cut the long story short we uh, do not consider the boolean properties we just consider this is a polynomial right over variables where the complement does not exist and the boolean property does not hold okay but that's something don't much impact because what is my objective we try to take this expression and you try to do this oper operations of um, algebra okay not the boolean operations to get this common sub expression okay so let us see how what we do we will basically use the division operator of this algebra let us discuss what is the division operation. So, division is basically you can divide this dividend this is called dividend with divisor you will get the quotient and this is the reminder. right? So, this is uh, what we do. So, in terms of expression suppose you have given this expression I can factor this in this form right so that means a plus b into c plus d equal to e we can do that say for example here you take a common then you'll get c plus d then from here you take b common you'll get c plus d then e so this is again common sub expression right so i can write this as a plus b into c plus d plus e so now if i divide this so if this is my divisor this is my quotient right and this is my remainder okay so that means i can actually divide an expression with a product term or a sub expression i'll get if i get something in product term i can actually represent my expressions in terms of divisor quotient and remainder right my function in terms of this and then i'll say this is divisor this is quotient and you can see here this basically the common sub expression. So, I can kind of correlate this with the common sub expression that I am identifying. Okay. So, uh, some more example. So, if you have uh, a function f I can actually divide this by e then this is my uh, divisor this is my quotient and reminder is 0. Right. So, this I have already discussed. So, you can see here that c plus d is the common divisor and this is what I can actually identify that is how this multi level factoring is happening. Okay. So, in the algebraic method our objective is to identify the common sub expression we do not forget what we are effectively going to do is the identifying the common sub expression. Now, the question is how do we do that? So, the answer is that you identify the kernel of the function. Okay. So, let me explain what is kernel. So, kernel is called q free quotient. Okay, so, you can try to relate with the division operation. So, it is a cube free quotient you divide a function with uh, divisor okay. you divide this with d you get quotient here and you get reminder here. So, it is saying that whatever you are getting here if it is a cube free then this will be kernel okay. Okay, and this whatever the divisor if it is a single cube or a product term then it will be co kernel. 
Okay. So, there are uh, few things which is not clear here which is cube free. Cube free is so that you cannot factor out a single cube or product term from that. Okay. Uh, from divider that leaves no remainder. Okay. So, so uh, what does this mean? So, let me give an example. Say for example, if you have a expression like this. Okay. So, here you can represent this as this right x into y plus z. So, this is not kernel because you can factor out a product term out of it. Okay. There is a common uh, product term for this. Okay. So, if you see here what I have written here it is say that it is a cube free quotient. So, this is if you get a common uh, product term then this is not cube free hence it is not kernel. Okay. So, this is cube free because there is no common you cannot take w common x common y common or z common. So, this is cube free. So, this is I can say this is kernel. This is also uh, cube free because you cannot take x common from all right. Although there is x common for the first one, but it cannot be taken common from all product term. Okay. So, this is also cube free and hence this is also a kernel. So, you can think about that kernel is a sum of product expression so, q which is common to all product terms. Okay. So, this is what is called kernel and what it says that uh, if you divide a particular uh, function with co kernel with c, uh, c which is a single cube what is single cube like any product term a b c a d e f g these are the single cube right. So, then and if you get a q which is a sum of product say x y plus z or say x y plus x z plus w something like this right x plus w uh, y plus x z. So, something like this right these are all sum of product where there is no common term. So, then this will be called kernel of the function. Okay. So, given a function we should know uh, how to identify the kernels first. Okay. So, that something uh, is important. Uh, so, uh, if I take an example say suppose there is a function this how do I identify the kernel. Okay. As I understood that if I divide this a single product term or a cube, then uh, whatever the uh, quotient we are getting, if it is a, a cube free, then this will be kernel. So, the idea is like that you can actually divide this particular expression with different product term, like since uh, the variables involve here x, y, z, w, u. So, you can take any sub expression like u, x, z, w, x, z, u, v, w, x, all possibilities, right, u, x, w, and so on and you try to divide this and see what is the quotient. And if the quotient is basically a product term a sum of product where, where you, you have at least two product terms and there is no common sub expand can be taken from that then that is kernel right. This is how I can try to uh, identify the kernels. So, if I take this example uh, is of this. So, what I can do I can uh, divide this expression by say w z. Okay. So, you can see here w z is common here and common here. So, I can rewrite this with w z into u plus v plus the other product term. Right. So, the if I divide this f with w z I will get u plus v here and in the remainder I will get other three product terms. Right. So, u x z plus v x z plus y z plus u v this I will get in the remainder right. But this is a kernel because there is no common sub expression in this expression. So, this is a kernel and it has at least two product term. Okay. So, this is a kernel and co kernel is w z. Similarly, if you uh, take x z common from here and here you will also get u plus p. So, if you divide this also with uh, x z you will also get this. So, this is called level 0 kernel because this is the minimum possible kernel and there is no another kernel which is a sub expression of this kernel. Okay. This is level 0. Similarly, if you take this expression and you divide this by u z or v z you can try that. Uh, so, for example, here you can see here that if you take u and z common here u and z common here you will get u z into w plus x plus the other product terms. So, this is my co kernel or divisor, this is my quotient and this is the remainder. 
So, W plus x is the kernel and my co kernel is whatever my product term that through which I am dividing is my co kernel u z or v z, v z also can be obtained from this or this. Okay. So, this is again level 0 because there is no sub expression here. Okay. Now, you take this expression again and you try to divide this by only u. Okay. If you divide this by u, uh, what will happen here you can take uh, u common from here, u here, u here, u here. Right. So, what will happen? If you divide this by this function with u, you will get w uh, z plus x z plus phi as the quotient and then in the remainder you will get other 3 terms. Right. This 3 you will get here. So, if I divide this with a product term u, then this is my quotient. So, this is a kernel because there is no common sub expression. Okay. So, this is a kernel, but you can see here if I rewrite this like this, I can take z common here then you are getting x plus w plus v. Since this is a level 0 kernel, I will say this is level 1 kernel. Right. The level I will decide if there is a kernel which is already present in the sub expression of this. right? So, this way this will be level 1 kernel. Similarly, if you take v common from here you will end up getting this is my kernel and again this is level 1 because you can take z common here then w plus x will come here and w plus x is a level 0. Okay. Similarly, if you take z if I divide this by z you will identify this is a kernel again this is level 1 because here w plus x is there. So, this is level 1 and if you just divide by 1 the entire expression is also a kernel because there is no common literally in among all the product term. You cannot take w common from everywhere or v common from everywhere. So, there is no single literal that present in every product term. So, the entire expression is also a kernel okay. and this is level 2 because there is a level 1 kernel uh, present here right that you can uh, you can see here you can actually take common uh, u common from this, this and this you can get this one. right? So, this way uh, I can actually mechanically I can identify all the kernel of a function. So, this I understood using the division operation, but why this kernel is so important? Okay? Uh, because it says that uh, because this Bertrand and McMullen theorem says that if you have given two function f and g and you have to identify the common sub expression among them, then this common sub expression will be in the intersection of the kernels. Okay. So, that means, if I identify all the kernels of function f and if I identify the kernels of function g and then if you take a intersection, if this function has any common sub expression that will be in the intersection of the kernels. So, this is very important. So, this actually emphasizes why you need to identify the kernels of a function. Okay. So, uh, this is summarizing the process that uh, using algebraic method you are given function f and g, you identify all the kernels of function f, you identify all the kernels of function g and then you take the intersections and in the intersection you can actually identify the common sub expression. Okay, then you can rewrite the function using this common sub expressions. Okay. So, let me give an example. Uh, before giving the example, let us uh, explain the generic form. You can write your uh, f as uh, some cube into kernel 1 plus remainder the way I was explaining earlier. Right, that you can actually this is a product term and this is a sub expression and this is the remainder. Then only this is kernel. Right. And similarly, suppose G also have a kernel which is kernel 2. So, I can represent my G as this right cube 2 into kernel 2. So, if I take uh, my example here uh, when I was expressing like this. So, you can take this expression and say if you take W Z as common then I wrote it like this right W plus X plus the other product term. So, this is my kernel 1 this is my the product term cube 1 and this is the remainder. So, this way I can also write my other expression 
right. So, this is how I represent say I have kernel 1 and kernel 2 in f and g. So, if I go into more deep into kernel 1, so this is a sum of sum of product, right. So, I can write again that x some product term, y some product term plus some other stuff, some other term. So, you can think about this is a plus b plus say uh, or say if I write in terms of x, y, z. So, it is say x, y plus z plus say maybe w plus u, v, right. So, this is what is my x in my example, this is x, this is y and this is the stuff one. Similarly, I can also rewrite my kernel 2 like this. So, this is again x y plus uh, say z plus maybe say uh, w v plus x. Okay. So, then this is again x, this is my y and this is my stuff 2 and plus reminder as it is. So, what I just write, I write a detailed form of this kernel. So, what we found that this, then I can distribute this. So, this is q 1 into this plus q 1 into stuff 1 plus reminder. This is cube 2 into x plus y plus cube 2 into stuff 2 and reminder. So, what I identify this x plus y is the common sub expression and that is there inside the kernel. Okay. Uh, so, then I can rewrite my expression like this that x plus y is the common sub expression and this is coming here as d and the rest of the things I rewrite like this. So, this actually uh, helps me to identify the common sub expression among f and g. A precise example suppose I have f and g in this form uh, where the variables are a, b, c, d, e, 5 variables are there. So, what are the kernels present in f? Uh, a plus b plus c d is a kernel for this which I can uh, easily identify that if I take e common from here right. So, I can rewrite like this e into a plus b plus c d plus a b right. So, that means this is my kernel this is the co kernel right. So, this is one kernel of this. Similarly, this b plus c is also a kernel why. So, if you take b plus c right. So, you can take common from a from here and sorry this is b plus e. Okay. You can take uh, this a b plus a e then if you take common a it is b plus e. Okay. So, this way b plus e is one more kernel co kernel is a similarly you can identify a plus e and the entire, entire expression is also a kernel. Okay. So, these are the kernels, 4 kernels are possible in my f. Similarly, you can cross check that this uh, have 4 uh, again 4 kernels. Okay. So, these are the 4 kernels and then what I told you that if I try to identify the common sub expression between f and g, it will be the intersection of these kernels. Okay. So, intersection mean you can actually take a intersection between 2 kernels. right? So, I can take this and this there is no common sub expression. So, there is intersection is null, right. But if you take this, uh, this one and this one, you can clearly see that it is basically a plus b is common, right. So, if I go back to my previous example, this x plus y is basically a plus y, a plus b and stop one is uh, c d here and it is 0 here, right. So, it means that a plus b is the common sub expression between this. So, I can rewrite my entire circuit with in terms of a plus b, okay. So, for example, if I try to write the f as uh, if I take e common then it is a plus b then c d e plus a b and g I can rewrite if I take a plus b is the common sub expression. So, a plus b. So, I can take e common again this is a plus b plus a d plus b c. So, that means this a plus b is the now common sub expression which I can reuse among this function. Okay. So, what we identify uh, so far is that to do this multi level optimizations, we have to identify the kernels of a functions and then we have to look for the common sub expression in the intersection of the kernels. Okay. So, this is something is the process, but so far I have explained that for kernel identification you actually use the concept of division. And the process that I talked about is basically brute force, right? Where we are basically identifying all possible product terms of the available variables, and which is an exponential way, right? So, for example, if there are n uh, variables, so there are two to the power uh, n possible way you can get the product terms. 
So, and then for each one you have to divide and you have to identify whether your uh, quotient is Q free or not. This way you can identify the kernels. So, obviously this process is not that efficient. Okay. So, in next class we will talk about a automatic way or a systematic way through which you can identify the kernels of a function efficiently. Okay. So, with this I conclude today's class. Thank you.